This is my passive solar window heater made out of simply a cardboard box that was opened up covered on both sides with dollar store aluminum foil and painted black on one side and that's it and I put it in my long window that faces where the sun rises in the morning and there is heat coming out of here right now it's cloud passing over and the rare occasions when the sun shines and this is April so it's the rainy season but it is warm in there and when the sun comes out it bakes it pours the heat through there so this is one of the ways I'm trying to keep warm in the cold season and this is really simple it may cost if you bought the box it was 69 cents at the lumber yard the aluminum foil was a dollar and a dollar roll of tape but I didn't use the whole roll of foil or tape so there's a very simple heater well it was in the 20s or 30s last night I'm not sure I was afraid to peek my head through the window and look but it's 58 in here 9.30 in the morning with no heat on I did use propane last night because it got cold but I shut it off at 7.30 when I got up. Last night, because it was so cold, I temporarily stuffed a blanket around that opening to my access panel. It was just really cold last night, and I had to stop the wind from blowing into here. I'm actually not going to move that until it warms up in a bit. I've got about three amps coming in at 9.30 in the morning from my new solar panels which is actually double what I would have had before so the MPPT charge controller is making a difference although it's it's not much but the Sun is not yet shining on the panels it hasn't even cleared the treetops yet Oop. cloud just went away I just hit five amps for a peak there for a second so once the sun clears the treetops I'll have more current but this is this is actually doubled more than double what I've been seeing in the mornings at this hour I dug around and found an old saw that wasn't working and took the cord off it there's my cat again I'm going to make an extension cord because I don't have an extension cord I'm going to make one to go from my power inverter here over to my power plug for the camper alright this is amazing it's 11 o'clock in the morning the Sun is not even fully on the solar panels yet and I've got 21 22 amps of power this is double what I was bringing in before so this new charge controller is definitely doing its work. When the sun is directly overhead, I can't wait to see what I'm going to have. I just hope it don't uh, hurt my meter. I might hit 30 amps today. But this is good. I will charge my batteries today. I've got my inverter on. I'm charging my handheld vacuum cleaner. My cordless vacuum cleaner. I'm going to make power cable to plug into my wall sockets so I can run the rest of my appliances I've got my thermal electric cooler on I'll leave it running all day I have plenty of power and I have my laptop charging so this is good what I'm going to do right now I've run the wire from my cable I left the plug-in end the male end over by my power inverter and I've run the wires through my camper over to where my original wires were that were in the power control box. Now what I had is I simply, these went into the 120 volt breaker box from the original camper circuits. And what I did is put, put on some plugs. They were cheap junk. I never could get them to fit right. But anyway, these are the AC lines they went into the breaker box 
and I'm going to splice this wire onto these so I'll have power to my whole camper. Now I've got, this is the camper AC wiring that originally went to the camper breaker box. That was for when you were at a campsite it plugged in and then the breaker box distributed the power throughout all the AC outlets in the camper. And I have just hooked it up to this cord. I cut off a dead saw and that goes over here now to my inverter. My heavy blanket here I was using for insulation last night. Uh, my inverter doesn't show the proper wattage though. It says zero um, continuously, although I have my vacuum plugged in. And now I have AC power. Although that light is a little bit hesitant on starting up, I have AC power now. So that's nice. Now for safety, I've taped this all up nice and tight and neat because I do have a cat and she runs through here playing all the time and of course I have mice and she runs through chasing mice and mice like to run through here. So I've got a lot of wildlife running through here. So I taped this up secure and then I'm going to tuck it up inside and put it out of my way. That's staying now. Get it. Well, I have just about 22, a little over 22 amps. This is the highest I've ever seen. And that's with two 200 watt solar panels. So this is looking really good. And again, the sun is not yet over the panels. It's still only 11 o'clock in the morning. So my new MPPT controller is making a huge difference here. So I can't wait to see what happens when the sun is overhead. Well, a lot of people have mentioned to me that I should get a bucket trap. And I think I have a bucket trap without even trying. This had some residue from my maple syrup in it. And now it's got a dead mouse. I guess he got in there and couldn't get out. He went after that maple syrup. And in the other bucket, which I'm taking down to the creek to wash in a minute, is full of ants. So it's time to start trapping ants or I'm going to have a mess. When they get in, they come in in the thousands. And they start eating the wood in the camper. I don't know if you can see that properly. The solar panels are facing away from me. Now I'm going straight up and I'll show you the sun is over here. So we'll come down and show you the angle here. I hope that makes sense. The panels haven't even reached full sunlight yet. It's from the side and I'm pushing 22 amps. I'm really worried what I'm going to get when the sun is straight overhead. I hope I don't blow my meter. But I really have to keep an eye on it today. Well my charge controller is pulsing the batteries. I'd love to know how many amps it would be if it wasn't pulsing. The green light is pulsing. I would really like to know. I bet I hit more than 30 amps if it wasn't pulsing. I wonder if I can turn something on in here and put some drain on and see how many amps I can pull. Well, I'm at 25 amps. I turned on my stove vent, my stove light, and I have two incandescent bulbs still in here. So, 25 amps. Uh, the sun's not yet directly over, but I think with the charge controller pulsing until I get more batteries that's probably going to be my limit. This is nice. Now I have energy to spare when the sun shines. It's my stove, fan, and light running. 
just to burn off some energy just so I could do this test. I just set this in here just to see what's going on. That's my voltmeter. And it's just sitting steady at 14.4. Rock solid and steady, 14.4 volts. So this new charge controller is amazing. My batteries are sitting at 12.7. Uh, they were about 12.8 when I got home, but now I've got lights on and I'm charging my home light chainsaw battery. Now, I had this running on my Bedini generator for uh, quite a few weeks now. What this does, this thing actually puts out 200 volt spikes of electricity and it's, it's not normal standard energy as we know it. Just look up radiant energy. Anyway, this puts out spikes of energy which breaks up the crystals in a battery or in the case of a lead acid battery it breaks up the sulfation of the plates and converts it back into lead and uh, acid properly. And hopefully what I've done is destroy the crystals inside here which cause these things to short out and not take a charge anymore. I put on the charger and it's taking a charge so we'll see what happens. If I'm lucky I'll be cutting wood tomorrow and we'll see. I should have done this in front of the camera for skeptics but there's my meter. I just pulled this off the normal standard charger. Now this battery was shot. It, I've had this over a year never got to use my chainsaw. 20.8 volts. I just used the standard charger to charge this and it's sitting at 20.8 volts. So I can't wait to try my chainsaw and see if it's actually got a good charge or if it's just a uh, superficial charge. We'll see tomorrow. But anyway, I had this on the Bedini generator, putting 200 volt spikes into it continuously for a couple weeks now, and it got up to 6 volts on the Bedini, um, but it wasn't going any higher, so I figured, somebody mentioned, uh, somebody sent me a video the other night of somebody uh, zapping a battery manually. I can't imagine sitting here tapping your thing manually for hours on end, forget that. So I let the Bedini do it. and. Um, from that video I got the idea of popping this into my conventional charger and see if it will top off. Well, it seems to have, so I'll find out tomorrow.